Hi, Rumi and Sam Drujnik. Thank you for being here and welcome to yet another Let's Try Tuesday, this time featuring Builders of Egypt, the prologue. Now, I have been a long, long, long-standing fan of Pharaoh and Cleopatra. I've played a lot of that game when I was little, and also a few years back, I reinstalled it and had a lot of fun. So it is a very, very, very complex and complicated game. Now, I think that this, Builders of Egypt, is the spiritual successor, the first and true, hopefully, first and true one, to Pharaoh and Cleopatra. And uh, what the what the developers have done, it doesn't have a final release date yet, but now it has a free-to-play prologue. It's It's been free-to-play since, uh, I think, a few weeks, uh, if you're watching this live. But I've only been able to get to it now. So it has a free-to-play prologue in early access style so that you can give feedback. And so if you want to try this game out, all you need is Steam, and then you can play it for now. So that's just a tip. Let's jump into the campaign. So we have, I, I have, I have not started the game proper, but I have looked at this. So it seems that the prologue might have four maps or maybe, no, prologue probably one and then early access three. And then here it says old kingdom oh, one post early access. So I think this is the full release. So this is the prologue, a glorious capital for Kemet in a pedge. And um, then we have uh, Ketchu Mefkat, which is locked, uh, Abju, and Sakara. Now, if you look at the, the, the thing that we can actually play, what it does say is, The ruler of Upper Egypt, King Narmer, conquered Lower Egypt and united the kingdom on the Nile. Now the country needs capital. King Aha, Narmer's successor, sends you to Memphis to supervise the construction of this magnificent city. A political, administrative, and religious center which will become home to the royal family and thanks to its monumentality will strengthen its authority. So we need, we can't change the difficulty, we need to gather 12,500 12, bread, export 5,000 bricks, gather 2,500 pottery, and gather 200 dwellers. I like this text block here. <laughs> Start. Oh, you gotta read this out loud. First Egyptians established... Oh man, that's too fast. Arable fields mainly for spelt. Oh, should, oh I, can, I can wait. Okay, barley and date palm. Because their meals were based on bread and beer. Cattle, pigs, goats, sheep, and goats... Goats twice. Were reared, but most often tasty and nutritious fish of various species supplied by the Nile were eaten. Continuously developing craftsmanship supported the development of agriculture and breeding. Thanks to the brickyards, which produced sun-dried sun -dried mud bricks, I totally first read sun-dried tomatoes, the local population could build their first houses and workshops. In the early period of Egypt's development, also bakeries and breweries can be considered as one of the most important workshops. Oh, this is long. In order to gain ha hard-to-reach goods, the Egyptians established business contacts with their neighbors or colonized areas where they could extract valuable minerals, metals, and stone-building material. For this reason, sailing was developed and the necessary ports built, thanks to which the Nile became a nourishing artery facilitating the exchange of goods and the, re and the re receipt of raw materials from remote quarries. From the earliest times, an important aspect of the life of the Egyptian city was to defend it. As a result, defensive walls were built and armies strengthened to protect city dwellers from marauders who would dare to resist the will of the pharaoh. Do you want me to keep reading this? Well, this is about Memphis, so yes. Min, the first king of Egypt, was told by the priests that he had insured Memphis against the floods of the Nile by building a dam. So if to this mine, as they tell, the first king of Egypt, the fenced arm of the Nile, turned into permanent land, he established there a city, which is now called Memphis, and dug a lake around it from the outside, from the river to the north and to the west, because to the east the Nile itself is the border. In addition, he built the temple of Hephaestus in that city, which is great and worthy of mention. In this way, the Greek historian Herodotus, who lived in the 5th century BC, reported on the beginnings of the town of Memphis. If you're not interested in this, just go forward a little bit of time to the gameplay. The aforementioned King Min is called in other sources the mythical Menes, while the Egyptian texts call him Narmer or Aha. Both rulers have deserved for their both rulers have deserved for their country. Narmer, the last pharaoh of the 
Zeroth dynasty, united Upper and Lower Egypt, and his son Aha, founder of the first dynasty, began to build one of the most important capitals of ancient Egypt, the city of Memphis. Memphis was the administrative, political, and relig religious center of the first Lower Egyptian Nam. The city was the second after Thinus, Egyptian Tanit, capital of Egypt, and the residence of the pharaohs at the very beginning of e Egyptian history, that is, in the early dynastic period in the Old Kingdom. The high rank of the city was emphasized by the fact that the rulers kept their palaces here even in later times, when the capital of the kingdom was another center. Memphis was one of the largest religious centers of ancient Egypt. From the earliest times, there was a great sanctuary of the god Ptah, called het Ptah, or Kaptah Temple. Interestingly, according to some Egyptologists, the name of this place of worship was the source of the Greek name of the country, Aegyptus. The human figure of Ta was identified with the old deity of the land called Tatanan. Therefore, Ta was considered a host and the incarnation of the vital power of nature. In turn, the symbol of the deity, the bull Apis, was connected with fertility. From the earliest times, Memphis was considered to be the center of craftsmanship and artistic production, which was supervised by priests from the Ta temple. God himself was considered the guardian of arts and crafts. Ta, together with the goddess Sakhmet and Nefertum, formed the Memphis Holy Trinity. Other deities were also worshipped in the city, and each of them had its own temple. The western part of the city was ruled by the god Sokar, who became the guardian of the Memphis necropolis. Memphis was one of the most popular and most populated areas of Egypt. It was inhabited by a truly cosmopolitan community, which was mainly due to the growing foreign, to the growing foreign trade, in which an important role played mainly Memphis in which an important role mainly played by Memphis workshops and port. Even in later times when the most important Egyptian city was Thebes, foreigners, the symbol of Egypt was Memphis. Unfortunately, the city was almost completely destroyed in ancient times. Already in the times of the New Kingdom, sculptures decorating temples and palaces were taken away to decorate other places of worship, especially those located in the Nile Delta. The buildings of Memphis, including the Great Ta Temple, were dismantled and used for the construction of Muslim Cairo. Luckily, the Memphis necropolis met with a different fate. Its size, 30 kilometers long, proves the size and importance of the city. That's big. The necropolis includes cemeteries in Dashur, Saqqara, Abusir, Zaviet el Aryan, Giza, and Abu Roche. It happened that particular quarters of Memphis, which adjoined the royal pyramid complexes, borrowed their names. In this way, during the 18th dynasty, the Egyptian name of the city, Menefer, permanent beauty, which was originally the name of the pyramid of Pepi I, 7th dynasty, in six, sorry, in Saqqar was created. Menefer in the Greek version is still known today as Memphis. The earliest name of the city the Egyptians owed to the first rulers of the Nine, Nile from the city of Thenis in the south of the Delta. They had to build the fortress at the junction of Upper and Lower Egypt, which they called Inab Hedge, or White Wall, which probably was a reference to the appearance of a fortified residence. However, the most appropriate name seems to be one that has been used since the Middle Kingdom, that is Anktavi, the one who connects two countries. The term reflects the strategic position of the capital located at the junction of Upper and Lower Egypt. Although Memphis quickly turned into a metropolis, it did not lose its agricultural character. From an early age, bread and beer were the staple diet of every Egyptian. Well, especially the beer part sounds good. The bread was baked most often from spelt, lotus seeds, or, since the Greek-Roman period, also wheat. Beer was brewed from barley and often sweetened with date molasses. Ooh, that sounds good! Egyptians also liked to drink the milk of various origins, cow, goat, sheep, or donkey. The meat of farm animals, such as pigs, cattle, goats, and sheep, hosted on Egyptian tables much less often than the fish, in which Egypt abounded thanks to the Nile, numerous irrigation channels, and swamps. Because the Egyptian climate was difficult to cultivate vineyards, only the richest Egyptians could afford for a delicacy such as wine, which was drawn from distant vineyards, primarily from the Delta, the Fayum Oasis, and another oasis in the Libyan desert. Start. Well. Okay. The ruler, the, the ruler, the ruler, Upper Egypt conquered Lower Egypt and united the kingdom of the Nile. Now the country needs a capital. Yes, King Aha, the successor, sends you to Memphis to supervise the construction. Oh yeah, we've already read this. Go. This short tutorial is intended for the early access version and will be expanded as the game develops. Here you will learn the basic rules of the game. Okay. 
In ancient Egypt, the idea of currency was unknown. The work was paid for with bread and beer. To simplify these mechanics, treat these resources as the cost of placing buildings and exchanging wares. You can find their icons in the top panel. Bread, beer. Okay. You can get bread and beer mainly from trading and collecting taxes, but these are not a reliable source of income. So make sure you do not run out of them, because in such a situation you will not be able to further develop your settlement. The settlement development should start with de de designing a grid of streets. <laughs> That's uh, not directive at all. Select a road from the building list and place a street where you will be building your settlement. Remember that the first basic resource is water, so it is best to practice to build a settlement along the river. Okay, let's look at the map, though. Can I... Pretty! Oh, wow. Very nice. How far can I zoom in? Very nice. I can do like this. Okay. Cool. Okay. Road. Oh, I can... Okay, go like that. Wait, I can... Now the audio is very, very low, don't you think? I'll do it like that. Now we can actually hear the music. You don't want to listen just to me, right? You want you want to have the game audio too. Whee. Boom. Look at me, I'm so good. <laughs> I'm a pro! Oh, I only have to go until here. Look at me, I'm so good! Okay. Houses. Select a house from the building list, place it next to the road. Remember that all buildings must be built like this. If you leave the building off the road, it will not work and may collapse over time. Okay. Can I rotate it? Oh, <gasps> I can rotate it. Look at that. Ah, oh, let's do it like that. Boom. A building placed like this will encourage immigrants to settle in your city if it has sufficiently high levels of satisfaction, which, as you will notice in the later game, is not easy to achieve. The arrival of the first inhabitants is announced by a message in the bottom right corner. Remember that you can always demolish a building. Refund depends on, the, depends on the level of difficulty. Note that removing buildings at a later stage can be tricky as you shatter the delicate economic balance, potentially. Let's practice demolition on this road because we don't need it here. Remove the highlighted section. Boom, 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 boom. Look at me. Your dwellers need to be protected against fire. Select a fire station from the building list and place it down. Yes, incoming dwellers though. Woohoo, rejoice. Where are they? Oh, they're over there already. You can't, you have to, oh, there's no road here yet. Hi. Oh, look at that. They have names and stuff. Coming to cities. Sacha. Imhotep. Okay, so they have health, wealth, city rating, security, education, and home level. Build a fire station. Yeah, let's put it like that. That makes sense to me. Note that after clicking on the fire station range icon in the bottom right corner, a filter will appear. Oh. Okay. Showing the coverage of the settlement with the range of the given buildings. Oh yeah, there, okay. This building protects other buildings from fire, but remember that the effectiveness of the protection reduces as the distance increases. It is a good idea to build a fire station at relatively small distances from each other for better protection. Okay. It is high time to look at the buildings you have constructed. Use right mouse, bu right mouse button to select house. Eh, no, hang on, yeah. Nah, I can't. Oh, maybe here? Right mouse button, right? Left mouse button, game. The details of the building will be displayed. If you look from the top, you will notice the things listed below. Current warnings. No dwellers, I suppose. Name of the building. House. Level. One. Capacity of the house. Number of available workers. Two cap. Five cap. One available worker. Risk of disaster. This here. Risk of fire, risk of disease, risk of collapse, risk of crime. Required resources to raise the level of the house. We need a well. Collected resources and current access to buildings. Zero. Okay. 
Note that each house has its own range, which, which determines the maximum distance to the building in which a dweller can work. In the case of hard-to-reach workplaces such as mines, it is worth considering building a work camp, which is mostly a self-sufficient unit. In order to upgrade the house, the well should be placed in accordance with the requirements we have just observed. Build a well in the close range of the houses. How can I see the range? Is that the green part? I think so. Okay, let's build a well. The house will now be upgraded if it has been completely occupied. Yes. Oh yeah, there we go. Good. Remember, if there's something missing from the previous level and the next level, the house will be degraded. Okay. Each city needs an organized production for its growth, starting from the production of basic resources necessary for the production of the houses. Build a clay pit. Clay pit. Note that each building requires workers to be assigned from their homes. Production buildings have a minimum number of employees below which they don't start working. Below which they don't start working. And with a maximum number of employees, production reaches 100% efficiency. Okay, so we have 8 out of 8. The production of wares may require the construction of more than one building within the production chain. You will find information about the building by right-clicking on it. No, left-click, okay? Left-click. Finished wares are collected by the employees of the stockpile and stored here. I guess we need to make a stockpile. Built the stockpile in close range. Okay. Note that it does not have a predefined range and can pick up orders from the other end of the map. Therefore, you can control the stockpile policy by clicking the right lift mouse button on the building. Okay, so we can say, like, don't do wheat. Yeah, don't take, just sell, collect, sell up to. Okay. Bricks, pottery, wood, clay, reeds. Oh, goes down. Barley, flax, turquoise, copper, gold, granite, limestone, plainstone, sandstone, papyrus, linen, meat... Jewelry, weapons, chickpeas, lettuce, figs, pomegranate, straw, fish, oil, beer. That's a lot of resources. Nice, 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 nice. I love it. I love it. To complete one typical production chain, build a brick maker. There. Some production buildings require specific condi conditions or locations. Wells must be built by the river. Quarries by the hills and woodcutters require forests, which may be depleted if you devastate the entire woodland. Okay. Remember that buildings within a single production chain must have been connected to the same road network in order to be able to supply each other with products using the stock. Roads are used mainly by stockpile and granary workers, so keep roads connected if you want to transport weirs in an efficient way. The inhabitants need food to improve their houses. As before, we need to create another production chain. Each subsequent upgrade of the house has its own different requirements. You can check them in the house information card. So if you look at the level 1 house, now you need one type of food. Why do you need food? You're very, 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 very picky, aren't you? <laughs> okay. So far, very similar to Pharaoh. I love it. Build a fishing wharf to start fishing. Okay. Sure. Sure, sure. Can we put it here? Is that the place? Wait, where do you want me to put it? Doesn't matter! Well, let's put it on the edge. Maybe we can put one next to it. The food produced has to be stored in a granary where it will be distributed further. Yes, I agree. Yeah, that makes sense. The food is distributed through bazaars. If the bazaar supplies with ware, the inhabitants will continue to deliver them to their houses. Bazaar. Is it a bizarre bazaar or a non bizarre bazaar? <laughs> Uh, let's do it like that. The finished wares can be used to build a monument if the mission requires it, or it can be traded away. To do this, you need to set up a trade route. To do so, click on the region map icon on the top bar. Yes, I will, but I want to look at this first. 8 out of 12. You have what? Do you have peeps? 6 out of 6. Nice. Can we actually see you? There's somebody in the dock, and you're what? Hitting the ships. Okay. If you want to do that. Oh, look, there's somebody in here in the clay pit, too. And here, oh, look at that! The people are working! That is fantastic! What do you need? You also need straw, so you can't really work right now because we don't have straw. Oh, this is cool. This is pretty. Region map. Abydos, you are on the region map. You will find your settlement on the map and all known other settlements. You can only make contact with some of them at the beginning, but this situation may change during the mission, okay? 
Right click on the selected settlement to see what it is trading. Left click, I suppose. Oh, I didn't read the rest. Trade route with Abydos. So, what? I don't really know what this means. You want to buy bricks and clay. Okay. You're closed. I, is Abydos the only one that we can... Can I zoom out? No. Well, that's kind of fuzzling. Kush. Wawat. Abu. Nekin. Geptu. Abydos. Buto. Us. Okay, yeah. So we can only trade with Abydos. Trade route. 200 bread. Okay. The trade route has been opened. From time to time, a trader or a ship will come to the city to exchange wares. At the beginning of each year, the amount of purchased wares is reset. Same as Pharaoh. If a trader exchanges all his goods during the year, he will not arrive again until the next one. You must first determine whether you want to import, export... Oh, oops. Okay. So, I... For now, I think I'm going to be exporting some clay. If you want to keep bricks in a specific stop, stock value, you can set it in its options on the information card. That is fine. So I'm going to get bread for it, I suppose. Knowing the basics of the game, you can focus on completing the mission. To recall the conditions of victory, go to the general tab. Mission description. Oh yeah, look at that. Export 5,000 bricks. Look at that. We have finances and diplomacy. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. These are the most essential rules of Builders of Egypt. The tutorial will be expanded with new elements as the game develops. Okay. So now we're on our own. What do you say? You need workers to work. Okay. <laughs> workers to work. What is the range of the um, well? Oh, that's very small. These guys don't even have water. Is that right? We need another well. But, okay, I guess here is a good place to put a well. So we would like to reach maybe here? I don't know. Like so? Or like so? That makes sense to me. So if we build a road... Can we... Yeah, we can. And then, like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a full grid, but... Now we can put some houses down again. Yeah, you were like this, I think. There we go. I hope these people will reach there. I guess we'll wait and see. A request from a neighboring city. A messenger from the neighboring city has arrived. The Nomark. Nomark? Uh, the city asks you to help him deliver the following goods to the settlement. 500 straw. Okay, but I don't have straw. So how do I do that? Can I pause the game? Not by pressing spacebar. That's for sure. Let me see. Food production. A farm! That usually produces straw. Okay, so we need to go here. We can put two farms in a row here. Let's do that immediately. And let's get a road there. There we go. So now we have two farms. What you making? Wheat and straw. So that means that our brick maker will be able to start working. Surely we have clay though, but maybe it's all in this storage. Oh no, there's some clay here too. A hundred. Okay, so we have that. Wear production. Potter. We can make pottery. Faith-related buildings, a, sh a shrine, administrative buildings, a bazaar, a granary, a stockpile, and a fire station. And then here, a plaza and a decorative palm. Oh, plazas like that, okay. Can we put a plaza here? Would it make sense? Let's do it. 
That's so pretty. <laughs> Let's see, shrine. Oh, you're not small either. What if I put you here? You'll be able to reach everybody. Well, that means that if I put you here, you'll still be able to reach everybody, so we might want to do that. Because we're not going to put any living beings over there. Like there. Yeah. Hope they can reach everyone. People, come hither. Okay, level up. Are you level two now, then? Yes, you are. So what do you need? Oh, what do you need now? Level three, sorry. Access to temple. Oh, but we only have a shrine. Hey, you can say, don't upgrade. You can lock upgrades, and you can also lock work. Oh, huh, interesting. Very, very interesting. So we do have fish coming in. Probably not a whole lot. I don't know how that how that works. Just yet. You work, make two clay. You take two clay and make two bricks. So that's fine. Is it one on one then? And you make two straw. So we'll have double the amount of straw that we need to get the brick maker to work. So we could put down another clay pit and another brick maker to optimize it, but we would have, we would need workers and we have zero available. However, we have people coming in here, quite a few, and a trader. Oh, there he is, he's running. Trader from Abydos, you want to buy bricks and clay. Look at the price difference between bricks and clay. 35 bread for clay, 150 for bricks. Very fascinating. So you have 10 workers, one carrier only, but maybe you don't really need more. So is anybody really in need of workers? You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. The farm. The farm needs workers. Okay. Can you reach that farm? Yes, you can. Okay, so 10 workers will go to the farm. We'll have workers available to do something else. So, I'll build a second clay pit. Okay, so there's clay here and clay there, apparently. Okay. Could have optimized that a little bit better, I think. And then a second brick maker. We could also build a potter. There we go. Okay. So, these people have moved in. Immediately have work, I hope. This farm is now operational as well. With full capacity. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. And you are... Did you get some of our clay then? I suppose so. Yes, you. Wait, you got 600 of the 300 that you really wanted? Is that what I, I'm reading it right? Thank you for the bread, but... <laughs> That's weird. Anyway. Anyhow, um, I guess there will be no religion here yet. Un unless you unlock something when you get bigger. Decorative palm. Oh, that's pretty. Put it here. But no, I'm not going to be wasting any bread right now. How can I collect taxes? Does the fire station reach? Yes, it does. It's fine. We don't need a second one. And we can even get more houses. So that's good. I don't know if we need more houses just now, though. You have 5 out of 10. Wish I could see in advance what the potter uses. Can I see that somehow? No, I can't. Oh, look, here you go. Oh, you can see the available workers. Oh, that's that's neat. So we have one worker without a job, but there are more people coming into the city. That is so cool. So say we were to put the potter here. Say we were to do that. What do you need? You need clay. Two clay makes two pottery. So one more clay pit. 
Okay, that that's that's whoa. Milestone! We got a hundred people, I guess. Yes, we did. Or more clay pit. Can I put one more here? Will it work? I can put it here too, though. That's fine. House and road, road, boom. Boom. And I guess we're gonna do this so that it can get there faster. Okay, really good. So did I unlock new buildings? Not really. Nope. Sad days. Okay. Um, maybe we need to check the food situation because we now have zero in our granary. You can't see anything either. Well, that is sad. Where can I see? Let's see, economy tab. I want to know... Uh, main menu, fire station cover map, tax collector cover map. We're not collecting any taxes, look at that. Wear production. That doesn't really say anything. Fresh water cover map. Healthcare. Police station. Fire station. Okay. How do you... Yeah, turn it off. Oh, maybe here. Mission description. Finances. Diplomacy. Tech tree. Tech tree? Oh, it's not available. <laughs> but I want to know... How do I do this? Send help. Hmm. However, I'm now using all the straw that I am producing. So how about we build another farm? I think we need food anyway. I do think we need food. There we go. So we'll be producing a surplus of straw. So maybe we can do that help mission. What's this? 10, 100 fish. Oh, now it's gone. Is that your store? I really do think that we need to um, upgrade food production. You have 54 fish, zero wheat. You have nothing. <laughs> yeah, we need food. Let's get another fishery. <gasps> we can't pop it down there. Anywhere else? One fishing wharf is all we can do? Serially? Not even here? Ah! That's sad. That's so sad. Okay, well. I'll do this. Instead. I want more fish. Hmm. <laughs> we still have a little bit of people coming in, but I think that we'll have some workplaces with no workers or not enough workers. You only have five. We don't want to grow too quickly. Because if it this is anything like Pharaoh or Cleopatra, <laughs> if you go too fast too soon, you're gonna die, you're gonna crash and burn. But we have zero available workers, so this farm will not be cultivated. It always takes a little bit of time, I think, if to to, to you know get people where they are supposed to be going, but I still think that this will be a bit of a long shot. Cool. Look at that. Delivering resources. It's so pretty. Okay, so um, I can't make bread. I guess we really need to start exporting can you reach everybody? Yeah. Uh, really need to start exporting those bricks. Which we are, because we have a hundred. Oh, we even have a hundred pottery. Hey, hang on. Hello. 
nobody... I wish I could zoom out further, because this is a little... This map makes me a little nervous. In terms of... I, I, I don't know. It makes me... I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, how can I make contact with Buto? Can't. Does anybody want my pottery? Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Gather pottery. Oh, we need to gather it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. We couldn't cut wages. Two bread for employees instead of three. Let's do that. I'm gonna make them unhappy, maybe. I don't know. They're poor. But they have food. I mean, you even have two types of food. Do you already have some food? You have nothing. Like, if anybody is supposed to be unhappy, it's them. But they do have a shrine that they can go to. It doesn't do anything, though. I guess it's just somewhere that they can go to visit. Hmm. Okay, what's this? Show building icons. Oh! Okay. Toggle. So what are we missing here? Authority buildings, educational buildings, military buildings, defensive structures. Cool. Let me get a palm built in case that helps with um, unlocking anything. No? Gotta try. It's a good try. It's a very good try. Okay. So we have a trader incoming, so that will give us food. Oh, look at that! The Nile is flooding! Oh, dear. That means no food, eh? Did we get enough in? I hope so. Can't see it here. A hundred fish. No wheat. Where's the wheat? Zero wheat. Where'd the wheat go? Pottery. What's this, then? Is it straw? Straw. Okay, so where's the wheat? I don't see it. Maybe it's already been sold? Okay, the Nile's back. And the workers have to come back, I see. They got me 70? Bread? Really? Only that? Well, that's not very much now, is it? You got 1,200... Oh, this is the max year by on the left side. I see. So you got 300 bricks this year and 200 clay. Okay, he is increasing his... Um, uh, the amount of things he asks for. Because last year it was less. So that's good. Okay, so this is this is good income for now. However... Yeah, we need more houses. That's the, the conclusion. Unless we have people coming in and upgrading houses. Yes, 7 out of 9. But maybe two more houses won't hurt. Here and here. Because that will populate that farm. I really wish I could get another fishery. It doesn't allow you to do it even if it overlaps with half of it. So even if I destroy that one, I can't put it more to the left. <laughs> Sad days. One fishing wharf. Only one. That puts a huge pressure on the farms. But I do have straw. Hey, can I help the straw thing? 500, though. How much am I storing? Nothing anymore. Really? Farms? Okay, we really need that, that fourth farm to, to operate because um, we need that straw. And the dwellers are coming in for those two houses that we just built. So let's speed it up a little bit. Run, 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 run. Run around. La, la, la. Oh, look at the birds. Oh, 
Oh, the birds keep flying at the same speed, irrespective of your game speed. That's interesting. Very interesting. Um, while this goes on, let's let's just look at the map a little bit more. So you'd expect some quarry to be going on over here. Oh, I can't go further that way. Oh, but I can go this way. Nope. The Nile. Oh, I can't go to the opposite side. I do like that they have continued the map over there so you can see, even though you can't do anything. So it's a very elongated map. That's, no, it's actually not. It's just very small. Memphis, you're teeny tiny and cute. Okay, so I think we are earning bread. So we are doing okay. We're, our, our economy is stable right now. Which means that we can expand. Right? So, say... I mean, we don't have any available workers right now. Say we were to expand, we would probably... 300. We need 500 straw. We can hold it. Oh, it's possible to send goods. Hang on. Yeah. Send. There you go. We, we sent help. We are so good for this world! So... What does this give us? Hmm? Will it tell us if something opens up? You can't do anything else with them. Unpause. Okay, you can still get to them. Oh, we have six available workers. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get another f uh... <laughs> Yeah. I hope you got all the goods out. Oh, you can still walk on the roads even when flooded? Huh. That's fascinating. You got wet feet, though, now. Wet footsies. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if I can make the road go... No, I can't, can I? Well, I can't... Well, yeah, I can't build a road. So I should have left a space here for another farm. Maybe we can do it like that. And we can build... No, we can't build a farm here, so that was useless. Really? Yes, we can. Oh, we could have built one here then. Okay, so we have another farm. That's good. We just need a lot of food. You still have zero wheat, zero fish. Poor granary. It is effective, but it's just not getting enough food in. And if we can't expand the fish, we can only expand the wheat. So... Incoming dwellers, that's great. We are almost at 200. Uh, well, not really almost, but you know what I mean. What did you get, dude? Should I build a road there so that people can actually... I mean, you don't pay for infrastructure, right? I mean, you To put it down, but not to maintain it. There we go. Uh, I can make you connect up. Just like so. That's fine. It's not the prettiest, but it'll work. You kind of want to be able to go all around the temple, right? Sorry, the shrine. There. Boom. That's fine. I don't need this part. Give me back bread. There we go. That's better. That's fine. Okay. So. Uh, we have 147 people and message from the neighboring city. The vizier of the city is very grateful for your help. He hopes that diplomatic relationship will keep improving in the future. We got 391 bread. Nice. That's nice. Okay, it's good to help people. That's my conclusion. But I want to open up more trade routes. Did we help Abydos? Is that the place that we helped? Or was it Buto? We have no idea. 
Hm. Okay. Okay, okay. 151 dwellers, five people without a job. We could... Hey, is that a fire? No. That was just me being blind. Okay, let's get another farm. I mean, why not? Okay. You are level three. So you need another... No, you need access to temple as well. So nobody can level up more than level three because they... Um, don't have a temple. And I'm assuming that the game would tell me if I were to unlock any buildings. Fire station can still cover everything. We could build another plaza, but why why spend money on that? I would need a lot of bread. Hmm. Bricks exported, pottery gathered, dwellers gained. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think we have the basics down, though. So I'm wondering whether I should pause this recording, play until I am further into this mission... And resume when I have something something to show you again. Maybe that's good. What is this? What are you telling me? What are you telling me? Three plates on top of each other. I saw that somewhere. Granary. What does that mean? You have no food? Does it mean that? I don't know. No food. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Quite, kind of clear. Okay, yeah, so we do need more... More food income. Which is understandable. But yeah, let me try to play on a little bit more. And see if I can show you something interesting again in a second. Welcome back. Our city has grown a bit since you've last seen it. We uh, have 270 dwellers, as we like to call them. Now, two storage yards, which are almost completely full. Especially the second stockpile. And uh, we have a brickmaker, extra, some more clay pits and more farms, and some houses over here with a bazaar and a well. And we are almost, almost at mission goal, because we... Oh, we got it. Oops. We got it. We got mission goal, didn't we? Uh, we have exported almost 10,000 bricks, almost 4,500 pottery, uh, gathered, gathered. We have 270 out of 200 dwellers. And, uh, I think... <laughs> then we have met victory conditions. So, yeah, that's what it takes. I didn't get any other buildings unlocked, so it was a simple um, balancing act of expanding... Uh, while getting a little bit more resources and things like that. So it, 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 the, there is a lot to be added in this game. So far, it really does have that pharaoh feel and um, obviously not the pharaoh look to it. It looks so, so much better than pharaoh. Um, and I really am really, really interested in seeing what else they add and how that's going to balance because... Let me tell you, this makes me really, really excited for this game. Now, let's see if I've unlocked anything new now, or if not. <laughs> it's just restarting the game. Ho, 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 that's loud. Don't do that. Do, don't, no. 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 It's just restarting the game, isn't it? Okay. So, yeah, it's just restarting the game. So you can you can do it again. Okay. I guess it doesn't register that uh, whether you've already finished this. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, that's, uh, that's going to be it for me for today. So I just wanted to show you how, uh, how the first campaign map in the prologue plays. I'm very excited. I enjoyed it greatly. And uh, I'm happy that I... I got the victory. I hope that it shows you what the game can do. It's still in early access, as I've said before, so there will be a lot of changes, as you've seen. 
there's a lot to add to the game still with the other resources that they've already listed. Uh, you know, the figs and, and, and papyrus, etc. But it's just not in this version yet, which does not mean that they don't have it um, in, in concept. So what we've seen is just a very, very small part of what this game has to offer in potential. And uh, I'm very, very excited. So as soon as more comes out, I will cover this because I really, really love this type of game. And I hope you do too. If you did, if you do, let me know. I got a little distracted because Rumi just uh, walked by my feet and I felt something soft and furry and I got startled. But anyway, I hope that you liked this Let's Try Tuesday. If you did, hit the like button and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so. It really does help out immensely. Let me know what you think of the prologue in the comments down below. I'm very, very happy to talk about the game with you and uh, also about Pharaoh and Cleopatra, really, if you want to. Um, new Let's Try Tuesdays come out every three weeks on a Tuesday at 6 p.m. CET. And I really hope to see you next time.